in-depth video about what I'm going to be doing on my upcoming flip. Uh, I go on quite a bit of detail here, so if you want to see the quick version, please go see the short that it's linked inside of the description below. Alright, got a lot to talk about, so let's get going. Alright, I guess the first thing is first, we're going to be talking about the overall layout of this place um, and what I'm going to be doing to change it, what my phases are, and how I'm going to be attacking this project from a construction management standpoint. So first off, I know I'm about to get 100 questions about what programs I'm using. I'm using this program called Autodesk Revit, kind of like the industry standard industry <laughs> industry standard for architecture. Uh, it's probably a little bit more overkill than what I need. If you're looking to get started at designing some houses, I would probably recommend something like SketchUp, where it's a free tool that you can use. Um, and if it's not necessarily free, if you want the pro version, it just doesn't cost that much. Um, there's quite a few other options that you can use, and there's uh, also some free options online, so don't let this be the barrier of entry for you. Um, there's plenty of other options. I also use this program called Twin Motion, which is now included with Revit, um, and it talks, or it, it's more like a video game render, and you can actually just like walk through this place and uh, get a better feel for everything. But I don't want to get too spoiled with uh, what I got going on here. Those are just some of the software that I use. Um, and basically what it came down to was me going back and forth with the property a bunch of times, collecting a bunch of measurements. Um, I have this little Bosch laser measure that I go around using to do all my drawings. Um, I basically just sketch it out uh, by hand first, kind of get the general feel for it, and then I'll come back in with my laptop to the property later on and then adjust and get fine details. I pretty much spend like two or three hours getting the plan down. Um, and then I develop the designs after that. All right, so like I said, I'm gonna break this down into phases because uh, all projects are broken down into phases, whether you like it or not. Of course, it's gonna start with demolition. So I'm gonna highlight the demolition stuff at this point. To do that, I'm gonna go over here to my left side, go previous and demo. All right, so you can tell that I'm not demoing everything, but there's still quite a few things that I'm demoing. Um, the big ones, I'm removing every single door in this place. Right now they're single panel, single flush doors. Um, they don't look fantastic. I need this design to be a little bit elevated because I'm gonna be reaching a higher market here. So I need to upgrade the doors. I found a good door supplier next to me that I'm gonna be using. We're gonna be doing all solid wood doors that are a shaker to panel. It's gonna look really nice, uh, but not too much on the doors, not too much more on the doors, we'll save that for later. Obviously the big part of this is going to be focusing on, on this kitchen design. So I'm ripping everything out. <laughs> um, it's a good way to get started, right? Is just take everything out. Um, right now the kitchen sink is located right here. And a big part of this job is that I'm moving that from that location over to the island. So here you can see I demo these walls out, creating that open floor plan view. Uh, we're not going to be seeing any more walls here, so you got open sight lines right to the back. Here's the dining room over here to the right, and then the living room is back here. Um, so try to create those open sight lines. That kitchen sink is being moved, so what I have to do here is actually, when I rip all this out, I'm going to be assuming that the water lines and drain lines for the sink go somewhere under here. The vent lines looks like it's a vent line underneath the sink. Um, we're going to be venting it underneath the sink as well. So we're going to be routing the plumbing lines from here over. Uh, we have to chip out a lot of concrete. So if you have your house on a wooden floor slab, like a joist or something like that, a lot of these homes in the Midwest have those. Uh, it's a little bit easier because you can just reroute the pipes from underneath. Maybe it's a cross space or maybe it's your basement that you're routing your pipes. Uh, when you have a concrete slab on grade, which is what I'm dealing with down here in Florida, we don't have any basements due to the flooding and bad sand, or actually it's all just sand. Um, with no basements here, so I have to basically tell my plumber to chip out all of this concrete. That way we can route a pipe that's about, I think that they're four inch pipes, maybe three inch pipes, I'm not exactly sure. But uh, he'll mount for the drain line, he'll just uh, demo all of that out, make a little trench. And another tricky thing is we also have to get electrical over here, so I want electrical in the island. I'm having my microwave in the island as well. So my microwave is over here. We have dishwasher. We all have a garbage disposal. So we'll have quite a few outlets, quite a few need for electricity. Um, there's also going to be the need for actual outlets around the outside of this island. Uh, probably one on this side, one on this side, and then maybe one over here. Um, so we'll have to run a good amount of electrical to there. Um, 
Speaking of electrical, one of the things that's getting moved is the refrigerator. So the refrigerator is currently sitting right in this location. I'm moving that to this wall. That's not a huge jump. Um, I don't know exactly where that is. I won't know until I get into it. Uh, but basically the electrician, electrical guy, electrician, <laughs> is going to be routing that over there. Uh, we're gonna be adding a few more outlets. Uh, and on top of all of this, speaking of the fridge, it has to be connected to um, this water from the sink right here. We're gonna be tapping into the sink, running into a reverse, mos reverse osmosis filtration system. From that reverse osmosis filtration system, we're gonna be running to the refrigerator. That way all of my refrigerated water water from the refrigerator is going to be coming from our reverse osmosis system. That's going to be the, our uh, super clean drinking water. I'm actually really excited about that right now. I just have the simple filter in the refrigerator and I'm looking to upgrade that a little bit. All right, so phase one is all about roughins. Speaking of roughins, one of the things that we have to do is this is where you want to adjust any major systems that you have. So that's HVAC, electrical, or plumbing. Um, those are pretty much your three major systems. You have framing as well, but um, that doesn't really require a major system. If you had structural changes, then that would also be a major system. No structural changes in this property, but we are adding, or add the, rather replacing the water heater in the garage. So that water heater is about right down here. Uh, we're gonna be replacing that. Um, those are pretty cheap to replace. So I'm getting like a 10 year water heater from Home Depot, they're about 500 bucks. Not too bad. All right, and then on top of that, there's also a water loop here for water softener. I'm in Central Florida. We have some pretty hard water coming from aquifers. Uh, our water is coming from aquifers. So I'm gonna add a water softener system to that. It's gonna be a whole home water softener to make the water less harsh, less water stains, all that kind of good stuff. So that's gonna be going down here. That's one of the main systems that we're gonna be replacing there. All right, the electrical already exists for the stove, so I don't have to do anything there. Um, I will have to probably do something with the range hood. I won't really know until I get into it, one of those types of things. And then we'll be adding, uh, I think that the GFIs are already over here. The GFIs are needed um, anywhere that there's water present. So anywhere in the kitchen would need a GFI. We'll make sure all those are working properly. All right, the next major step is going to be this bathroom over here. So here's my master, here's the master bathroom. This master bathroom is getting fully redone. Um, the layout does not work at this point in time. We have a big old tub here. We have a shower that's very small. And then we have the toilet back here um, and then a vanity with a single sink. Uh, we're ripping all of that out. We're making it a much more functional layout. So I decided to square that wall off. Uh, back in this view, you can see where this wall is kind of cut, chamfered. We're gonna be removing that and then adding it to where it's just a hard corner here. So framing that up a little bit with some green board. Um, and that's where that corner is gonna be residing. Uh, what that allows me to do is then put a door on top of that wall. Um, the shower door is gonna be sitting right there and I'll be pitting it open. It's about 30 inch opening, so that'll be good. Framing up a half wall on two by six studs. So that way the two by six can hold that, water, that niche. We're uh, creating a niche on this side to hold our shampoos, conditioners, my wife's thousand things that she keeps inside of her bathroom. Um, so I think that'll be really nice to have that really large niche. Have to provide some custom glass in this area right here. Um, so I'll have to reach out to a local vendor once this wall is built up. Um, that'll probably be in like phase two. Uh, we're doing this awesome kind of waterfall shower here. So this waterfall shower is pretty big. It's got the, the faucet head right here too, um, or the hose rather. Uh, so we'll be using that. Um, the design for this is going to be tile on the walls, accent tile on the back. We're going to try to go for a spa-like feel here. So um, hopefully that turns out really nice. The design is still a little bit in flux there. Uh, we picked out tile, got a quote from the tile guy that was like $4,000 higher than what I wanted it to be. So I'm going to try to renegotiate with him and also pick new tiles so that way it's not nearly as expensive. All right, we're getting a massive 72 inch vanity here, which is gonna be awesome, double vanity. Don't have that currently, and I am looking forward to it, so. Um, the toilet's gonna to be over here. I'm gonna probably make a privacy wall. I don't want it to block off any sunlight. This is the only window in the bathroom, and I want sunlight to be flooding the bathroom. I wanna make it as bright as possible. So I think that I'm gonna make like a translucent screen there. Um, that'll be phase three. I'm not too concerned about that. We don't need it to live in the house. 
And when I keep talking about phases, it's what I need to do to live in the house. So phase one is all rough and stuff. That's what I need to get finishes in. Phase two is finishes. And then phase three is going to be everything after I move in. So stuff that's not really crucial to moving in. All right, let's go to the left side. This is the second bathroom. We have two guest rooms over here. And then we have the bathroom, or their bathroom over here. The layout is staying the exact same. Uh, to save a little bit of cash here. So we're just replacing the tub, we're replacing the toilet, we're replacing the vanity, sink top, sink, um, replacing floors and then tile surrounds, uh, replacing the door as well. So pretty simple over here. And then the bedrooms, I can wrap those up in about a couple of things. They're getting new closet doors, they're getting new floors, so is the rest of the house. We're getting luxury vinyl plank in the rest of the house that I'll be installing myself. That's really easy, just snap together stuff. Uh, I mean, it's a piece of cake to install it yourself, and it saves me about three to four thousand dollars that I can spend elsewhere, or just keep in my pocket. Uh, like I said, we're also doing the doors, replacing those, um, and then we have the trim, and then we're doing ceiling fans in every single room, uh, just basically replacing the ceiling fans. Nothing too fancy there. Uh, replacing the floors in the bathroom. These two floors right here and here are going to be the same tile. This is going to be. A different tile. This is like a mosaic that you'd see in the shower floor, and then this is another like gray material. I'll do another video on materials once I get them all curated. Uh, right now, I'm just working on buying out the subs and making sure all that is in order. All right, so I did all of that. Uh, this is probably a phase three item as well. This is the little mini bar next to the window. Uh, I'm not too sure about the design yet. I think this window sits a little bit lower than what I have it right now, so I don't think that that's probably the best way to go about it. So like I said, it's a phase three thing. I'm not too concerned with, with that. Um, it will come later though. This is gonna be a phase two thing. This is the fireplace. Um, I don't have it completely modeled out, but you can kind of tell where my TV is gonna be going. Big old 70 inch TV that I have currently. Um, and make sure that it fits on that wall. Gotta have that. We're gonna be doing tile up this fireplace and then we're gonna be doing a large fireplace inset and like an electrical unit. Currently in there is a wood burning stove. Uh, I live in Florida, like I said. I do not need a wood burning stove. Um, obviously, the person before me didn't need it either because it has never been used. The flue in there has not ever been used, so I got to do something to block that out. Uh, luckily, one of my best friends is a chimney expert in the Midwest, so he'll be coming down and giving me some tips and probably some, um, hopefully, some help with some materials. We'll see what he could do. All right, that looks like it's it for all of that. We're painting all the walls. Um, we have popcorn ceilings, that's gonna suck. And I gotta take out all the popcorn ceiling. Decided to do that myself to save some money. So we're gonna be busting some mass right there to do that. Uh, this pavement over here is getting all redone. So we are resurfacing the pool tile. We are resurfacing the pool. We are doing new tile on the pool. Um, and then replacing these three ceiling fans back here. And this is actually lanai, like uh, screened in lanai, so this actually won't be visible. Yeah, if you want to check out what the house actually looks like uh, in real life, please go to that previous video that I will link in the description below. And it will also probably be like on the screen somewhere like above me or next to me, whatever. All right, so I talked about all that. Let me talk about what I'm doing with this thing. So, like I said, I broke this up into three different phases. I had to basically buy out all the contractors right now. Um, I gave myself about five weeks from putting in the offer to closing. Now, in that five weeks, what I wanted to do was make sure I had all my major trades in there. I wanted to get my plumber, my electrician, my framer, drywaller, tile guy, kitchen cabinets and countertops. Um, I got all of them in there. Oh, and a handyman. Um, one of my buddies is going to be doing some side work for me, so uh, I got him in there. I pulled quotes together from all of those trades. I did not have all of those at my disposal right away. Um, I had to go and basically call everywhere. Uh, a couple good places that I found. I mean, I have Google reviews. You could find a bunch of stuff, of course. Um, so I called a few companies off of there. I asked for some referrals from people that have done renovations in the past. Um, my wife has work friends that live around here and do renovations on their house from time to time. One of my buddies is in the industry, so I really just tried to get as many referrals that I possibly could, called all these people, made sure that my plans were super well laid out. So another thing that's really helpful to have is that this gets me 
like schedules. So I can tell them, okay, these are the schedules that I needed. Um, a schedule is basically quantities for all of my doors, um, all of my floors, how much floor I'll need, um, all my tile stuff. So these are, here's the tile stuff that I'll be working with. Um, how much tile I need for each. So that's really nice to have. You're able to get quotes whenever you have more information. You wanna see if you can get people to give you quotes without actually having to go to the house. This is how you start, it sounds weird. Um, you'll get more firm quotes later on in the project, uh, but right in this beginning stage where you're rushing through everything and I need to get like 20 quotes in a project in a week, um, I wanna make sure that all this is dialed in quickly. That way I can just send these design plans off and I can get a quote back in maybe a day or two. I also like sending them that walkthrough video that I do where I describe the project and they get to see it firsthand. They appreciate that they don't have to go and waste some time spending time visiting a project, driving there and driving back and then creating the quote itself or taking measurements, or whatever it has to be. So the contractors really appreciate it. It makes the process go a whole lot smoother. So my word of advice is try to be as thorough as you possibly can with plans. And if you can't get plans, just make sure you get some square footage estimates on what you want. Um, that way you can get contractor quotes in there what much quicker. So that's what I did the last couple weeks. I've also um, listed my house for sale, the one that I'm living in currently right now. Um, that gets listed for sale Wednesday, so in two days. Um, and that is, I close on the, this house, this renovation project in about two weeks. So. Today is the 8th. I close on this this home the 19th. That's when demolition starts. My house is getting listed this day. There's a, quite a bit of overlap. There's a lot going on, but I believe that I have a thorough plan and I think that this is all going to be working smoothly. I plan on getting this whole project done in about two months. Uh, we will see how that goes. I know there's going to be phase three stuff that's not going to be done in those two months and I'm okay with that. Um, maybe some phase two stuff even that's not done, but it's not too important. I just need to get most of it done. We'll call it 90% finished, and then uh, we'll move on our stuff. It's gonna be quite a bit of overlap. This project is gonna be all about speed. I'm gonna try to post as much video as I can. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. Um, other than that, thank you for watching, and I uh, hope you guys are interested in following along because I will keep you all updated. So until then, see you guys on the next one.